the headlines, the issues impacting you, all on This Week in Cincinnati on 9 in Your Side. Welcome back, everyone. This morning, we are talking with Cincinnati Mayor John Cranley, who, as you know, is running for a second term. And joining us is WCPO political and government reporter Paula Christian. Paula, I know you have plenty of questions. Yeah, let's talk about Amazon. Um, on Friday, you had the big press conference um, announcing Cincinnati's bid for the Amazon headquarters. So I know we're all hoping that the city gets it, but if we don't, um, what, what could you do as mayor over the next year to make sure that we get the next deal? Well, f a great question. First and foremost, and I said this uh, on Friday, we believe we can win. And I believe that in and of itself is a huge sea change for this city. I think 10 years ago, 20 years ago, we would not have believed that we were even competitive. But now because of the recognition we're getting for the Renaissance, the excitement of GE on the banks, all the progress we're making, we believe, and I believe we are, competitive. And half the battle is believing in yourself. You can't sell something unless you believe in the product. And you know, Amazon's already picked us for 2,700 jobs. GE has picked us. Children's is expanding. Kroger's building a grocery store downtown after 40 years. People believe in the future of Cincinnati. And as I pointed out today, and I brought this with me, uh, I pointed out on Friday, we had a top 10 reasons why we should win. And um, you know, from cost of living to consider the number one city in America for someone with a college degree, number one to having the most available space in an exciting downtown area between the banks of Newport and, and Ovation. We have all the ingredients that can win. And my theory on all sales pitches is that you got to ask 10 times to get one yes. Mm -hmm. And so whether we win this one or not, we believe we can win it and we will win others, just like we won GE, just like we won uh, other, you know, Amazon.com at the airport already and Southwest that we pitched for years to get to start flying out of CVG. And I'm proud to say that I was part of all of those pitches and that we are, we are swinging for the fences and we believe that we have the city that can win these bids. I want to follow up on that, if that's okay. Sure. Do, do we have the workforce though? Do we have the right workforce for Amazon? Oh, absolutely. In fact, our, we have a, a million three uh, talented workforce. We have a million people enrolled at, at 299 colleges nearby. Forbes and Smart Asset both said we're the number one city in the country for someone with a college degree. KPMG says we're the number one city in America that is the most cost friendly for business. They specifically said that the tax and regulation on the West Coast was uh, oppressive to their goals. Mm -hmm. And they're looking for a place that's easier to do business. And KPMG says we're number one in the country. And so, we re yeah, we have a real shot. I'm not promising we're gonna get it, but we have a real shot. So. Um <laughs> Listening to your state of the city and yeah. having heard them over a couple of years now, um, you weren't super specific. You were very good at t um, talking about what you have done, mm -hmm. but you haven't been super specific in your campaign about talking about what you're going to do. Could you give us one new thing that we can expect if you're reelected? We'd like to give many. I mean, the three big ones, well, there's more than three, but a housing court that we're still pursuing to help the quality of life issues, blight issues in neighborhoods, litter, holding landlords accountable for tall grass, holding landlords accountable for treating their tenants properly and humanely. Boston, Cleveland, Columbus, New York, all have housing courts. We're pursuing that. Number two, as you know, I've put forth a specific plan to dramatically increase public transportation throughout our county, a specific plan that will also, by reducing the city's earnings tax in exchange for a county-wide deal, increase our capital budget to do more roads and more bridges. As you know, uh, we're pursuing this plan to put solar panels up at Lunkin Airport and waterworks to take our energy consumption off the grid. That'll have to happen over the next couple of years. I still wanna see more cops on the street. I still wanna see, uh, make sure that we don't go back to brownouts with the fire department. And so housing court, additional public transportation, and what matters to me on the personal level is our efforts to reduce poverty and expand opportunity. The Child Poverty Collaborative is just getting started with Karen Bankston as a new executive director, working specifically with 5,000 families in a public-private partnership that I'm proud to say that I helped put together to bring private dollars in a joint effort to help people transition out of poverty into living wages. 
Would you be willing, I'm sorry, to work toward a metro government, with county, city government working, to, you know, is that possible? Well, the way state law is, and has been for several decades now, is no one can be forced into a metro government. Uh, suburbs would have to vote into something larger. Um, not likely in the short term, candidly. Um, and I'm perfectly comfortable focusing on the 52 neighborhoods that are in the city and making sure they get great value for their tax dollar and we improve the quality of public services uh, to all 52 neighborhoods. And that's certainly enough work for me to do. All right, we are gonna wrap up our conversation with Cincinnati Mayor John Cranley in just a moment. Stay with us.